Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Abcellera's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Abcellera is a biotechnology company that uses its proprietary database to research and develop human antibodies to address pandemics and common diseases. The company uses its technology platform to develop medical countermeasures within 60 days. It is unheard of to do this within 60 days. Medical countermeasures are FDA regulated drugs that can be used in the event of a potential public health emergency stemming from a terrorist attack or a naturally occurring disease. COVID is a great example of this. The company says drug development fails too often, takes too long, and costs too much money. That is due to limited technology and access to information. This company is going to solve those problems since they are more focused on the technology side as opposed to its competitors, which mainly focus on the medical side and lack the necessary technology skills to make the drug discovery process more efficient and streamlined. To drive my point home, it costs $3 billion and takes 10 years to develop the average antibody drug. Even with all that work, the failure rate is over 90%. Abcellera develops partnerships with small, medium, and large drug companies. The drug company presents Abcellera with the idea for the therapeutic agent, and Abcellera performs the entire discovery process and validates the work. It then turns everything over to the drug company for clinical trials. It locks in royalty agreements with other companies. That creates a long and healthy revenue stream. 82% of its revenue in the first nine months of 2021 was from royalty payments. Its process is so advanced, the big, medium, and small pharma companies are willing to pay them an ongoing fee just to work with them. Each time Abcellera works with a new company, like Pfizer or Eli Lilly, its database becomes more thorough, advanced, and refined. The company's database becomes smarter and more valuable each day since it can combine the knowledge of the top biotech companies together to get the best product in the fastest time. In 2016, the company received a $645,000 grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to develop a test for tuberculosis. Peter Thiel is the director of the company. He is the founder of PayPal and Palantir. In early to mid-2020, the company announced it had begun the world's first study of a potential antibody treatment against COVID-19. This was done in collaboration with Eli Lilly. They received final FDA approval in December, which was so fast that it impressed the entire biologics community. Abcellera collaborates with GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis, Pfizer, Sanofi, Teva Pharmaceutical, and recently they announced a partnership with Moderna. The company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and was founded in 2012. It trades on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 3.9 billion market cap. They're trading at $14 a share, and they have 282 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video, and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see that cash flow has grown a ton because of that COVID vaccine. It's over 200 million in the trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also grown a lot, over 200 million in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is the sales for the company, and that went from 9 million all the way up to 444 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Cost of revenue tends to be really low for a pharmaceutical company because once a drug is developed, then it's all margins, it's all profit. The real expense is in the research and development. You can see they spend a lot more money in operating expenses than in cost of revenue. 99 million in trailing 12 months. So they do have positive operating income in 2020, and it nearly doubled to the trailing 12 months. This is the company's latest income statement from their 10Q. This is the first nine months of 2020 versus the first nine months of 2021. And this gives us a little more detail than Yahoo Finance. 
The company had 236 million of revenue in the first nine months of 2021. That's a 10X jump from the first nine months of 2020. 14 million of research fees. These are fees companies pay to AppSellera for accessing their technology. 21 million in licensing fees. This is mainly from their licensing of their humanized rodent platform, Triani. They receive milestone payments, that was 8 million. There are three clinical stages before FDA approval. As a drug moves through each stage, this company receives a milestone payment and possibly another milestone payment once it gets FDA approval. But a bulk of their revenue is from royalty payments. So every time a vaccine is used that this company develops, Abcellera gets a percentage of that. And below that is their expenses. They pay 24 million in royalty fees to other companies that help them. 45 million in R&D fees. R&D fees consist of payroll, cost of equipment, also depreciation or amortization. They spend five million in marketing, 29 million in GNA, and 10 and a half million in depreciation and amortization. So their operating income improved from negative five million to positive 123 million. Their net income is still pretty strong at 94 million, much higher than the same period last year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. So you can see they generate lots of cash flow in the trailing 12 months, 263 million. And then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. A biotech company doesn't usually have too much in CapEx. Manufacturing companies tend to have a lot in CapEx because they have to buy warehouses, expensive machineries. Also mining companies have a lot of CapEx. When you invest in a company in the medical field, a lot of the expenses is in human capital, not fixed assets. But this company has more technology than the average pharmaceutical company. So they spent 51 million in the trailing 12 months. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they generated lots of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. They've also been issuing a lot of stock. They issued 600 million in 2020. And they've been adding some debt because they're trying to scale and grow and acquire other companies. This is their cash flow from operations section from their most recent 10Q. And this is the first nine months of 2020 and the first nine months of 2021. And the way you calculate CFO, you start with your net income, then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement, then adjust for changes in working capital. They had a 94 million net gain in the first nine months of 2021. We have to add back depreciation of 3 million, amortization of 7 million, 22 million of stock-based compensation, in order to bring in really quality staff, sometimes you have to compensate them with stock. There was a cash inflow of 194 million from accrued royalties. I'm just making this up, but they could have had an agreement saying once 100 million vaccines are sold, we'll give you 100 million dollars. After 90 million vaccines are sold, they did accrue 90 million of revenue, but they're not going to get paid until 100 million vaccines are sold. That's how accrual accounting works. Even if you don't receive the money, you still have to keep track of it because it is due to you. There was a 30 million outflow of income tax payable. These are taxes the company owes, but they're not due yet. Even though they reported a $94 million gain, they actually generated 261 million of cash flow. This is their cash flow from investing and cash flow from financing section. The first nine months of 2020 versus the first nine months of 2021. We'll start with cash flow from investing. The top line is CapEx, $49 million of CapEx spending, $245 million of short-term securities. They spend $11.5 million in acquisitions, $17.5 million in long-term investments. This could have been the purchase of stock in another company. And they invested $27 million into other companies. So they had a cash outflow of $331 million in their investing section. But this $245 million is not an outflow. It's just a short-term investment so they can make a small interest rate on the cash. In their financing section, they paid 1.8 million on debt. They had 2.6 million of contingent considerations. Contingent consideration is when a party transfers assets or equity to another party. Since this is in the financing section and is a cash outflow, it looks like they bought back some of their stock from another company. They took on 870,000 of debt and they paid five million for a licensing agreement. And they issued stock options and received 2.8 million. So they had a cash outflow of 5.7 million in 2021. The prior year, they had a cash inflow of 74 million. That's mainly from the issuance of preferred stock. Preferred stock is a hybrid of debt and equity. 
It's similar to debt because there's a guaranteed dividend payment. Debt, there's a guaranteed interest payment. But it's similar to equity because it can appreciate in price. It sits above common stock and the capital structure. In the event of a default, the bondholders get paid, then the preferred shareholders, then the common stockholders are last. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 953 million of equity. They raised 718 million from selling their business and a profit of 200 million from running their business. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 953 million of equity, 30 million of debt. So they're 97% equity, 3% debt. Their net debt is negative 723 million. So they can pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 723 million of cash left over. I gave them the highest whack on Finbox, 7.5%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 8.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $7.2 billion. We divide that by 282 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $26. They're trading at $14, so they're trading at a 45% discount. It's a buy according to the model. So I know a lot of people are bearish on this company, but I'm pretty bullish. That's why I bought the stock. So maybe I'm a little biased, but I think they have great technology. Plus with the new strain of COVID, I think this company is in more demand. So it is hard to predict the future. All I did was I grew their free cash flows from the trailing 12 months by 25%. So I added 25%. That's how I got their free cash flows for 2022. And then I added 25% after that. Four analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $35. The low was 25, the high was 48. This is from their third quarter presentation. And you can see their partners went up from 26 to 35. Partners are companies like Pfizer or Sanofi. And they have 155 programs under contract. And you can see that's grown a lot each quarter. They have two products that have gotten approval, two products in clinical stages, and one product in preclinical trials. One of their COVID vaccines is approved. That was approved last December. They're in phase two with Eli Lilly for its other COVID vaccine. They're in phase one with a product in dermatology, gastrointestinal, and immunology. They were approved for an oncology drug. I dated an oncologist once. What they do is they just work on the treatment of cancer. And the drug in preclinical trials is the one for animal health. So you can see the stock has gotten crushed since it IPO'd. And that tends to happen. It starts out really high and then there's a big sell off. I think I bought it around 17 or 18, so I'm not down that much. But I can easily see this company 10xing or 20xing, assuming they're able to continue developing new drugs and vaccines and cashing those royalty checks. The stock is down 75% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P is up 24%. The 52-week low was 13, the high was 72, and, and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. Over 2 million shares have been traded on average each day for the past three months. Of the 282 million shares outstanding, 180 million are on float, 44% are held by institutions, and over 10% of the shares are shorted. So it has a pretty high short percentage. A positive sign is a company that's adding employees. And they seem to be adding a lot of employees each quarter. They're up to 360. If you put $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd be really miserable right now, losing 70% of your investment. There's lots of insider buying and selling, but there's a lot more selling. Some really big numbers, 6 million shares, 1 million, 6 million, 1 million, 1.2 million, 1 million, all sell orders. And they were all back in June. The CEO of the company bought 200,000 shares last month. He did sell 12 million in June though. Peter Thiel bought 3 million shares in December 2020. The CEO of the company owns 20% of the stock, then Capital Research, Data Collective, Alliance Asset Management, and Baker Brothers. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their PE is pretty good at 19, and they're a hyper growth company, so a 19 PE is actually exceptional. Their price to sales is 9, which isn't great, but they're in growth mode, so it's okay. And their price to book is 4.1. They have a really high return on invested capital of over 100%. A really good ROE also of 22%. And they have a ton of cash on their balance sheet, so they have a really high current ratio and quick ratio. They have over 750 million of cash on their balance sheet. 
They seem to be well funded. They generate a positive free cash flow and have a pretty good amount of working capital. So they have nearly $1 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 18 companies in the same industry as Abcellera. And Abcellera is better in almost every category. They have a better PE, price to sales and price to book. They have a really high current ratio. They have a positive ROE. Most companies in this industry have a negative ROE. They don't have too much debt. They are a lot smaller than the average company, 4 billion market cap. The average is 16 billion. Their market cap probably was over $16 billion when they IPO'd. To summarize, I have them trading at a 45% discount, but this company is not a slam dunk. It's not like investing in a Pfizer, a proven entity, but this company has proven a lot more than many other biotech companies. They did receive FDA approval for their COVID vaccine. And the only thing Moderna received FDA approval for was its COVID vaccine. And Moderna's stock has gone ballistic. It's so high. But I did put $10,000 into this company, so I am willing to take the risk. I think they really have great potential. I ranked their free cash flows 8 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.